my name is Panin Alexey, and uh, today I, I'd like to discuss with all of you one very, very interesting topic, something that uh, I am really passionate to, to discuss with all of you. Uh, that's uh, actually how to boost your application that may be using MongoDB. Actually, the concepts I will be describing here are general concepts, concepts that may apply both to relational and non-relational databases. Uh, let's put in place now a set of rules that will follow uh, during this presentation. Uh, first of all, uh, I will be talking a lot. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to, to post those on chat. Uh, I'll try to follow them. Not sure I will be capable to answer uh, those questions before we finish. But if I see interesting questions, definitely we'll, uh, we'll, we'll stop and discuss. Uh, next, I will be switching in between my screens and will present you uh, a lot of examples of what does it mean an index, what does it mean performance, and how we measure it. How is it actually KPI'd? So let's go. Uh, so, some interesting information about me, maybe. Here is my professional email, my Twitter account, my LinkedIn account. I didn't put here Facebook account because uh, Facebook is, uh, I, I wouldn't look in it. And I wouldn't rather search my name in, in Google. So just, if you wanna contact me, use these links. Uh, okay, uh, I am, as I told, uh, I, I have a great passion towards uh, MongoDB database. Uh, I started using it back in uh, 2011, I think, the first time I touched it. And in 2013, I started a professional project in it. it. It was a production project with a lot of users. And the scope of this database was to, to reduce the, the, the load of, uh, over the MySQL database. And a part of load went to, to that MongoDB database. It was a real estate company that used MongoDB uh, very, very hard inside their project. And uh, that MongoDB was also used as a file server for all files hosted on that site. And uh, actually, my passion towards MongoDB started back in 2013 when I used it professionally. So what's a MongoDB? MongoDB is a database uh, that is, uh, let's say, that is what the leader on the market of non-relational databases. Uh, it, when you ask someone what's MongoDB, they use it, a database that uses JSON instead of tables. Uh, others say that it uses collection instead of tables. Others may say that it uses documents instead of rows. And everyone will, will be right in, uh, in that because MongoDB is the database that uh, implicitly described JSON model to describe a real uh, world object. Imagine that in a table, you may describe an object like name, surname, phone, address, and so on. But imagine that uh, you have users with that data that had, have several phones. How would you do that? You, you, you should add another table where you place all phone numbers of, of that particular user. And you have already two tables. Uh, when you have some more details about a phone that goes in depth of description of that phone, you get three tables describing a single user. So uh, this, uh, uh, this is solved very inter in a very interesting way in MongoDB. They describe it in a JSON model. Any object is described in JSON. JSON allows us to, to have types like arrays, like documents, like uh, associative arrays. Uh, like that, we may describe an object, uh, let's say in, in three way, like uh, an object may be a, a tree of other sub objects. An object may have other objects that uh, provide additional information and description of that object. And those sub objects may have their own sub objects. So it's, Objects, sub-objects, sub-objects. And that's uh, the model that MongoDB uh, allows us to have. I will show you some examples. Let's switch to, to my terminal. 
I'm here connected to MongoDB. And that actually may be an object from MongoDB. It's uh, the key query planner. Inside we have a field planner version that is one. And inside the same object, we have a sub object called parsed query that has a sub object social security number that has some, some properties. So that's exactly the MongoDB. You have a tree, you have four tree, you have a leaf. The leaf has some uh, components and each of that components may have sub components and everything is described inside the tree. Okay, we have some, some questions here, but I cannot access them right now. Oh, just a second. Okay, we are back to, to the presentation. Hope the, the model is, uh, is clear enough. Uh, uh, what does it mean a performance in terms of MongoDB? Uh, first of all, MongoDB was developed as a database that should provide more performance in comparison with other databases. If uh, relational databases have been created as database that describes a generic model of data, MongoDB is more business oriented. You have a business, you have a data model that, that describes specifically a business and you use it to describe exactly what you need. It's not like you create a generic model and after that you adapt your business needs according to that model. No, you have a business and you adapt database structure according to that business. Uh, so uh, first of all, uh, MongoDB takes that into consideration. And second of all, imagine you have a page and that page you have uh, described like LinkedIn page, user, all schools of users, all uh, teachers of a user, I don't know, addresses, phone numbers and so on. Uh, in relation to the database, you would have to perform a lot of queries to distinct tables inside, inside your database. Uh, in MongoDB, that might be a single document, document that you read and just output to the page. Uh, the difference is, uh, is, is quite evident. So you have either one query that you access by an object, or you have about 20 queries that you access in sequential way, one after another. So that's, that's why MongoDB comes with, uh, uh, by default, with a specific performance philosophy. Uh, when we talk to, to someone and we say, your website is slow, and uh, one of the first arguments that, uh, that people may have is yes, I know that, that, that my website or my application is quite slow because I have the, the, the most simple server on DigitalOcean. Uh, I, I'd like to, to have uh, a, a more expensive configuration, but right now my business model doesn't allow me doing that. Yes, one of the first and key points of having a performant application is to have a quite sufficient or quite enough uh, resources to process all your data. Uh, that implies to have a performant hardware. Uh, performant hardware is compiled compiled according to Van Neumann architecture from three layers. First of all, is uh, CPU. That's the, the 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 part that that processes your information. That the amount of operations you may perform on your data in in a, in, in a unit of time. Uh, second part of uh, of your performance uh, considerations from hardware point of view is having a good RAM. Uh, MongoDB uses uh, uses RAM to keep all indexes and all data uh, that seem to be relevant to the database in in RAM memory. So this means that as much RAM you have, uh, that amount of RAM MongoDB will consume. So if you have a server with 32 gig of RAM and you have data that will fit in that RAM, MongoDB will consume all 24 or 32 gig of RAM that you have on your server. And the third part that is very important in uh, nowadays with databases that have terabytes is input output devices. As input, input, input output device, I mean uh, hard disk, solid state drives, and memory units where you can where you can write or read your information. 
Uh, so, uh, which operations are usually performed on RAM and in memory by MongoDB? First of all, it's uh, aggregation. Uh, MongoDB, as, as we have seen, has uh, a tree, a, uh, the type of data in form of tree. So you have uh, like one head and a lot of leaves. And at some point of time, you would like to aggregate those data or aggregate data from different documents to, to obtain some statistical data. So for this, MongoDB has aggregation pipeline and all aggregation of data is done inside ROM. Uh, index reversal, all indexes are kept in, uh, in ROM. If an index is not kept in ROM, there is no need uh, of having that index because reading the index from uh, even solid state drive will be about 100 times uh, slower for the most performance solid state drives. Uh, write operations are performed in RAM. Uh, actual MongoDB has an uh, internal engine that performs write operations and when everything is validated and when a specific threshold is passed, the data is pushed onto the, onto the disk uh, all query engine operations, like all queries, all aggregation is uh, performed uh, also in ROM. And all connections are kept in ROM. Actually, it's, I think it's uh, the last one is uh, the most logical part. Uh, what, what happens with CPU when MongoDB tries to read or write data? Uh, so uh, when MongoDB reads and writes data, it uses as many CPUs as you have. If there are non-blocking operations like uh, two queries uh, on MongoDB or one query of read and one query of write on distinct collections or distinct documents, MongoDB allows uh, doing that uh, on distinct CPUs. If an operation can be split in two, MongoDB will definitely do that and will allocate two CPUs for two concurrent operations. Uh, so don't be surprised when your server is over overloaded on a CPU side if you have a lot of MongoDB connections and a lot of MongoDB queries. So it's not single thread, it is multi-threaded and it uses as much resources as you can provide on the server. And actually it's not that configurable. You cannot indicate in MongoDB that uh, you, you, you may use just 50% of CPU on the server. No, if you have a machine with uh, 32 CPUs, MongoDB will, uh, will consume the entire power of those CPUs if needed. Uh, so storage engine, uh, when you do write, it makes page compression, it calculates data, it uses aggregation framework, it makes MapReduce. So all of these operations are performed on, uh, on CPUs in a concurrent uh, model. And when you read data, uh, MongoDB by default, as I said, uses as many CPUs as, as it has on the server. Uh, for example, operations that will not be done uh, concurrently. When you submit an operation that is atomic in this case, it's the operation of update by AD of an object and then it increments the score by one. If you launch all these queries simultaneously, they will be accepted and treated on the same CPU by MongoDB, meaning they, they, will not be a, they, they will not be executed in concurrent mode or they will be executed in sequential mode because MongoDB uh, will lock a single document and when uh, the document is being updated, it's locked. When uh, the update is finished, it, um, it releases lock from the document and the second update may go there. So there are a list of operations that cannot be done in sequential model. Uh, this is one of the example. Other example you may find uh, on uh, official MongoDB website, but there are not that many operations that are done sequentially. Most of all, most of the operations are done in uh, concurrent mode. Uh, and third part uh, that I said is one of the most important parts of uh, MongoDB performance. Uh, from hardware point of view, there are a list of disks that uh, I found on MongoDB website that can be used for MongoDB, starting from uh, the famous uh, 7200 RPM SATA up to while and memory uh, 600. Uh, this uh, here you can see how many input output 
uh, operations per, per second can be done. Uh, on a simple SATA drive, it's uh, 75,100. On uh, one of the most performant is 1 million. And if you would like to do that in RAM, any operation on, on MongoDB, it may be up to 100 millions of operations. So this means that uh, any operation done in RAM is much faster, faster than, than doing it on disk. Although disk is very important in doing those operations. Uh, there are a list of advisable uh, configurations of your storage engines that uh, should keep your MongoDB data. Uh, the recommended one by MongoDB website, and they have a pretty interesting video that you'll find in these slides. Uh, that is, uh, that describes uh, why this model is uh, is uh, that good. Is RIDE 10, uh, or it's called RIDE 10. Uh, the not recommended list of uh, architectures of your hard drives is RIDE 5, RIDE 2, and RIDE 6. Uh, so uh, th th this means if you if you have to configure your MongoDB server, and uh, you are presented by your DevOps or your I IT engineer, one of these uh, architectures, you should definitely say no to this one, and you should definitely say yes to this one because this proved to be one of the most performant. There is a mathematical model uh, behind it uh, that that's, that that won't be part of this presentation, but uh, if you have any questions, we may discuss them in the QA session. So any questions uh, up to now? Let me check uh, Zoom. Uh, uh, are you hearing me well? Because I see a message that uh, I am not uh, well hear, heard by everyone. Uh, yes, actually we are talking about uh, MongoDB starting from 2.3 up to 4.0. It's uh, all, all, of, all of what I described up to now is related to versions of MongoDB 2.3 plus. So uh, let's uh, proceed with, uh, with indexes. And uh, when we finish with that part, I will uh, we'll have a short QA session. And after that, we'll proceed with the next topic. So when we, when we speak about MongoDB uh, and we aligned on its performance considerations from hardware point of view, when we have good hard drive and when we have a performance CPU with multiple cores, and when we have sufficient RAM, we're aligned of, on that part. We shall go into the, into the part of software of the actual MongoDB engine and to see how can we boost that, uh, that, that part. So let me show you an example and we'll go dig now in some, some examples. So I exited my MongoDB. I uh, exit my MongoDB from here too. Let me found, find uh, my examples. So let's drop my actual database data. There is nothing important. If I start the database, you see that uh, I increase the font. Database started is great. And if we go to the to the database and do list all file. Uh, we can see that we have a, some files related to Wire Tiger. That's the engine that works with MongoDB. It's MongoDB engine of uh, file storage. Uh, next, we have some, uh, uh, some files that are related to collections. Collections are an equivalent of tables in relational databases. Next, we have uh, some indexes. Uh, we have journal and we have uh, the log file. Uh, everything is good now. Uh, in case that we have a single server of uh, storing data. It's, it's, it's fine like configuration. Let's see if we can do something, something better. Okay, the, the same, you have collection, 
you have MongoDB log, you have Wire Tiger, and you have some journaling. Uh, let's remove the database and let's try to launch MongoDB with some extra parameters. I will explain the, the scope of those parameters. So MongoDB started. Uh, let's see. Ah, okay. I accidentally removed the database. Thanks God it's not production. Uh, let's see what's inside that that folder. Okay, so now we see that we have the same wire tiger, uh, wired tiger files. This means we have files related to storage engine. Uh, we have some collection files. Uh, we have some diagnostic data. We have index, sorry, it's demo effect. Yes. I copy pasted the wrong. Yes, uh, you, you can see here, I, I put it a new command. I will explain now the parameters of this command. Uh, here it is. We have uh, MongoDB. It's, MongoD is the daemon of MongoDB. It's the process that runs in background and uh, listens to the, to the port of MongoDB and answers with uh, results. dbpath is the place where we store uh, our database. Uh, we say to MongoDB to create a directory pair database. Uh, we say that uh, there should be a directory for indexes, and we say that there should be a path for logging. Uh, why do we need that? Imagine that uh, you have a not that performance server with not that big uh, hard disk, but that have a great internet connection that has a good link. And you have a lot of uh, servers that have uh, or you have specific drives where you would like to keep in indexes like file and memory with a very good input output uh, per uh, performance and you have uh, an average server to keep your data. So uh, what, you can do uh, what can be done, you say just, I would like to create a directory pair database and I will keep my databases, like database admin, database local uh, and database Yes, the admin and local. Uh, they will be kept inside uh, these specific folders. And whether you would like to make those folders as the amount of another disk, you may do that. And on uh, on the server, you'll have those as a local as local folders. But those local folders will be like links from from another server. So you you can have those uh, folders mounted to another to another, another disk or server and to, to have a better read and write in, in, in those folders. The same for index, where we did our index. Yes, when you go to, just a second. When you go there and you go to admin database, uh, you can see that you have uh, your collection files and you have your index files. Even for your index files, you can mount those on a specific drive and indexes will be on the fastest drive and your collections will be on average drive because reading data from, from disk uh, is uh, not that important as uh, fetching indexes from, from a, the fastest drive. So, we go further, yes, like that. We have a local database. Uh, inside the database, we have collection and index and all files are kept in there. So this folder index and collection may be mounted as a separate disk. So the, the read write will be as fast as possible on those disks. Uh, okay, when we discussed uh, how, to, how to create, let's say, those drives, how to mount uh, disks, and how to improve, even improve performance when you have a already good configuration of your system. Let's see how it can be done from software point of view. Uh, for this, we'll, we'll need to, to import some, 
some data inside our database. So 50,000 documents have been imported. Hopefully it works, yes. Uh, we can see that we have this database MongoPerf. Uh, we use it. Mongo. We use MongoPerf. Uh, okay, it's, it's not terminal, it's show collections. It should be there. Okay. Something went wrong, just a second. Imported. I'm trying to connect to 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 database. Show database. No, it's not there. It, it's range just a second because without importing those those data it's uh, let's let's oh, okay it, it's it's already removed Uh, let's let's start our server. It's well started. Uh, let's import our data. Not here. It's here. The command to import our data. Documents are well imported. We go to database. What? Okay, so we should have it there. Just a second. It's it's a demo effect. If I redo the import, do I have something in logs?
Okay, let's let me try something else. It's but it's strange for me. This is what what happens. Does anyone see the problem here? Yes, you're right. Sorry, it's Yes, okay, so we have items. Okay, you're right. I, I was using MongoPerf instead of MongoPerf DB. It's... Thank you very much. G good person that showed me that. Okay, so uh, uh, we, we have that, uh, that collection that is called items. Inside that items collection, we have about 50,000 of uh, documents. And if we try to, to, to perform a, a query on, uh, on that using a social security number, that's a field inside that collection, uh, we can see that we have execution stats. Inside, the, inside execution stats, we can see that the total documented uh, examined 50,000. This means all every document have been examined. Uh, we have used a collection scan. This means that we have passed all, all documents, no index have been used. In order to, to use index, uh, we can just uh, create one on social security field, uh, create index, social security number ascending, and index have been created. When we uh, redo uh, the same query on uh, the same field, and we ask explain, we see that uh, it, it does a fetch on index scan. Uh, the, the time for, uh, for this uh, plan is uh, execution time is one millisecond. And in the first case, we have 42 milliseconds. So adding an index on this collection uh, boosted the, the performance of the database 42 times. It, it, it actually for, uh, forced it even more, but uh, the minimum is, is at least one millisecond. Uh, we may create index uh, ascending and descending. Uh, what does it mean? If you create index ascending and you'll be doing queries uh, descending, uh, you'll have a bit of uh, a lag on uh, performance of your database because uh, you'll be fetching from the bottom to the top of your cursor. It's uh, actually, it's how the index is how the MongoDB in the very end will create your cursor. And in order to create it, uh, in the most optimal way, the index uh, type should be corresponding to the direction of searching of, of, those, uh, of those fields. Uh, uh, the second part of uh, index impact is uh, the impact on sorting of documents. Imagine that you already selected some, uh, some documents that uh, have this regular expression, they will be done uh, using index. And next you have to sort them uh, ascending or descending. And according to this sort order, we'll, uh, we'll have an impact. If the index was created uh, with uh, sort order ascending and you're sorting descending, uh, you'll have an index scan, but the time for that query will be higher than the time for, uh, for the query with the corresponding sort. 
Uh, yes. Uh, imagine you have uh, you have an index, not just on social security number, but also on name, also ascending, and on surname. We surname ascending. Yes. Uh, we created an index uh, and a compound index on three fields. Uh, and imagine you have to, to to find a document by social security number, where social security number is this one. As we already we have already seen, it will use an index, index on social security number, actually it's a rejected plan, but it tried to to review this plan for social security number, name, surname. Uh, imagine that you would like. You already have an index for name surname to, to find an object by name. And oops, it have searched by column scan. What does it mean? It uh, parsed all objects in order to identify something and it didn't use any index. And the time of uh, execution time of this query took 49 milliseconds. That is, uh, it, it's quite expensive in terms of, uh, of database performance. Uh, why that, did it happen? MongoDB says that when you create an index, uh, the and here we have index on social security number, name, surname, uh, queries that you are doing should use index prefix. If you are searching by social security number, it will use index. If you are searching by social security number and name, it will use the index. If you're using social security number, name, and surname, it will use index. But as soon as you start uh, using uh, not prefix of the index, but the middle of the index or the end of the index, it won't go into the index because index is created like you, you have already seen it uh, in, inside the index. Yes, uh, all data inside the index are like coupled all together and the, the value inside that uh, that index key is social security number, name and surname all in one place. So if you're looking by social security number and name, it will search like uh, a social security number, name, and the wildcard. Yes, social security number, name, and wildcard. If you're looking by surname, it will be searching it like that. If you're using just social security number inside the field you're uh, searching, it's like that. But if you start searching by name and something, it won't look inside the index, it will do like call scan. Call scan, it's uh, the, the slowest uh, possible outcome of a database search. It will scan the entire column. With 50,000 objects, it's not that much, but when you have a database even of one gigabyte, it's a uh, five, seven millions of uh, data inside your database, it will take seconds to return you the result. Uh, as I said, uh, for multi-key index, we may create multi-key index, and uh, for multi-key index, you should use uh, this index prefix strategy. So if you have an index, your queries should comply to this index. Uh, usually indexes are created when you already know what your application is querying. In MongoDB indexes are not created uh, from the very beginning when you say, okay, I will plan my database, database is like that, indexes are like that, and adapt your code for my database. No, you write the code, you try to identify what are the most relevant parts of your database that are queried and next you you're using uh, those queries in order to build right indexes inside the database to get the maximum performance the business is not adapted to the database structure but the database structure is adapted to business needs it's one of the key points of mongodb it's, and actually it's uh, one of the good points inside this database because in sql database or relational databases, usually business is adjusted to generic database structure and not database structure to business needs. So uh, imagine you have to, 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 to find some objects. Uh, 
in, inside a table that has millions or billions of uh, of documents. Uh, usually, on when you perform a query, it's an information that will be either presented in one re report, one page, one application screen, or in on one paper that is printed. So usually, on on that amount of uh, visual output you don't need to to perform a search on the entire billion of data uh, the, the most used data is uh, either the most recent or uh, some data that are filtered somehow inside the database i am drawing this uh, this way i will show you on my screen if, if you see my notebook Imagine that's the entire bunch of your data. Uh, the most relevant data is this, and this is a historical data that just is kept in database to, to have a backward compatibility or something like that. So in order not to index everything inside your database and to reduce the index size and to reduce the, in, uh, to increase index performance, you may provide a partial fil filter expression. That's a query inside your database upon which the index will be created. In this case, We'll create an index for first name, last names, and just on objects that have job greater than M. What does it mean? We'll have just we'll we'll have an index that covers just a part of your objects inside the database. And uh, th that has uh, two two key points. First of all, you get a small index inside the ROM. Second of all, you have a small index that can be quickly processed uh, when index is big even if it's in ram even if it's an index it's slow it, it can be slow so you you should also think about reducing the index size uh, next uh, mongodb as uh, any other databases allows to have no values or missing values inside the uh, inside your collections inside your documents so uh, if in my sql you have uh, documents that have name, surname, uh, and age, three columns. And if a column has no value, the column is still present there, MongoDB allows you to have uh, documents that even don't have a column. So you may have in the, in the same collection, five documents, one that has name, two that don't have name, and uh, two documents that don't have surname inside it. Because this value is no, and no, there is no sense to keep uh, additional space for saying that there is no value for a field. So if it's missing, it's either no or it's better not to keep it inside database. So in order to avoid indexing of no values, you just for creation of index use parse through. And like that you you can diminish to reduce the size of your index even more. Uh, first operation for reducing index is creating creating index on some partial expression filter just to be sure that your uh, index is small enough. And next step to reduce the size of index and to increase its performance is to say, don't index uh, values that are now, no sense to index them, just ignore them. Uh, next, uh, MongoDB also allows us to have, uh, to have such such an index called text index. It's a full text index. It's uh, uh, inside MongoDB even uh, we can indicate which which language will be text uh, that uh, we would like to, to index. Uh, indicate, how to indicate that language? We say that, okay, we may have a collation uh, from France. So your, 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 your uh, text will be indexed in French language. And if you'll be looking for data like Francois with S with this uh, sign or in uh, Romania uh, letters like E, E or in uh, German like Aumlaut, Aumlaut, and using instead of those letters simple A or simple C, uh, MongoDB will return you right information because index will duplicate the data using that cal collation. Uh, there are two strategies of building index. When you say that uh, MongoDB, please build me an index, that's a foreground index. Uh, you just launch it, your uh, database will uh, slow down, and in foreground, it will build the index. 
what does it mean that all queries that will go to the collection that are building in this moment an index, uh, they won't be responsive. Uh, they will queue all connections and all requests until the index is built. Uh, foreground index is built uh, quite fast. Uh, let's say quite fast. It's uh, the fastest way of building uh, the index, but it provides you a downtime of your application. There are real-time applications that don't allow downtime of, of that. So in order to rebuild an index or build an index from scratch, it's better to use background index. It will start building index while your application don't have either connection or it's uh, it's not using that many resources of uh, of the server. Background index may last minutes or even hours, but uh, when it's built, it works the same as foreground index. Actually, it's just a strategy of building index and not index type. In order to see what happens on your server when it's uh, somehow blocked, you can launch in MongoDB what's the current op and what's the and if you identify the current op, you can kill op. On our MongoDB, uh, we do DB current op, and we can see that the, the reason an operation from MongoDB internal client from this kind of uh, hardware uh, with this ID. And if uh, we're with ID, 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 it's somewhere, uh, op ID here. And if I'd like to kill it, I launch MongoDB kill op, kill op, and it should kill it in, in background. So this uh, operation, if it's a, an index built and you would like to uh, make your server back up, uh, you just kill the, the operation of building an index and MongoDB will uh, roll back all the index build operation. Uh, I think uh, all of you noted when I launched, uh, just a second, yes. When I launched uh, this query, that uh, th there is uh, so some information inside, it's, uh, uh, query planner. Query plan provides us with uh, necessary information to to identify where the application is slow or why the application is slow. So uh, in query planner, you see what namespace have been used. You can see the query. You can see what is the winning plan and how MongoDB is using what's the winning plan and what's not. Uh, it makes empirical tests inside MongoDB. Uh, all queries uh, do gather some statistics inside Mongo. MongoDB sees the most used uh, queries and tries distinct indexes at the very beginning. And the most successful indexes at the very beginning, MongoDB will consider as winning strategy and will use them for further use. So uh, whether we have a winning plan on a good index, you are happy enough, or if MongoDB made a mistake and uses by mistake or by its statistical uh, damage, uh, an index that is not that performant for your query, this is wrong one, uh, you can always hint another index. You can say, okay, I'd like to find something on items collection with first name Alexei, and I hint it to use first name index. And like that, you, you're you forcing MongoDB to use no not its winning query plan, uh, but you're forcing it to use a specific index, even if it's the index. This index may be good. This index may be not that good, uh, but uh, that's uh, the responsibility of the development team to, to choose the best choice. Usually MongoDB uh, uses the best uh, choice, even a better choice than developers may, uh, may, may think that it, it uses. But if you think that you're better than MongoDB in this decision, don't hesitate to use hints. I don't advise this strategy because it's a strategy, it's a failing strategy. You'll win in one case and you'll lose in uh, most of cases. Uh, next, very important part. Uh, when you're building an index, you, uh, remember uh, we had a creation of, of this index for social security number, name, and surname. Uh, Mon uh, MongoDB says, uh, first of all, inside your index, the first, the, the, the first item inside your index should be the equality operation. Imagine that you'll be looking for 
objects like social security number equal to some number. Uh, the second part of the index or the middle part of the index should be the sort parameter inside your query. Imagine after that, you'll be sorting by name. You'll say, I need these social security numbers that uh, fill in, in, in this uh, criteria. I'd like to sort all users or items by name. And next, you use range. Imagine that uh, uh, in this index, you'll have not surname, but age. So uh, this means that this index is a correct one for queries of the type. I'd like to have uh, all objects with these social security numbers uh, sorted by this parameter and uh, in range of this, uh, and H should be in some range. Uh, if you change the order of sort and range, first operation will be done using index and sorting and range will be done using column scan. So this means it's better to, to create indexes according to this strategy, equality sort range. And uh, uh, the, next, the, the next part uh, related to MongoDB performance is uh, th this one, as you see, that's uh, covered queries. What's a covered query? I will just show you a couple of examples. It's, uh, it's, it's much better. Oh, partial. Uh, not covered queries. Okay. So uh, we we have this uh, this query. We have an index on social security number, and we're looking for all objects with social security number greater than five. We touch execution stats, and we see that it took uh, seventy nine milliseconds. It examined uh, twenty two thousand of objects, and it fetched twenty two thousand of objects. That's quite good. It used index. It uh, found 22,000 objects. It's great. Can we do it better? Uh, imagine you have to, you don't need all information about the objects inside the inside the database, but you would need you need inside your application just a list of social security numbers in this format. And uh, yes, and. ID equals to zero in this format. You need just this output on your page or, or in your report. Uh, let's copy this, just not to have a typo. I think it's faster. Let's see. We have 29 milliseconds, and this is not because the result was cached. This is because the total keys examined inside the index is 22,000, and no documents fetched. Actually, it fetched all the information from the index. So this result, it came not from disk, but from ROM. And not from ROM of objects, but from ROM of indexes. Actually, this result was prepared for being fetched. And if you don't need some information that is inside that object, just, just limit your queries with a projection on fields that you need. And if those fields are equivalent to data that are kept in one of your indexes, it will be even better because you can choose a query plan for that to, to fetch from index. And you'll reduce your, your query by, by three times, I think. No, it's, it's twice faster. But actually, twice faster is uh, even better because when you do some uh, queries inside a batch script on 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 your uh, server, it may last either five hours or ten hours. So I think the the result here is quite obvious. You should you should use this strategy also. Uh, next part is uh, there are situations. It's not recommended. But there are situations when you would like to find your objects by a regular expression. There is also a, a rule here. You may find information if you would like to use index. 
you should make it prefixed or suffixed. You may have either here this sign, a tilde, or you may have at the end the dollar sign. This is uh, how uh, index will be used. It will take the start of your uh, data and it will use index scan. If it's uh, somewhere in the middle or the regular expression is like that, it will use column scan. So just prefix your regex and you'll have uh, the index used. Uh, when you, you're using indexes, you should uh, take into consideration that uh, there is an impact on your uh, global performance on the system. So uh, when you try to write data inside your database and you have a lot of indexes, it will have to update all indexes. So take care. If you have a lot of indexes, uh, write operations will be slow, but you'll have uh, fast uh, read operations. And the second part of uh, write uh, perf impact is the concern that you're using. Uh, concern is uh, the A flag inside database that says, I'd like to write inside database and I don't care if it arrived inside or not. I'd like to write a something in database. And I'd like to make sure that at least on one server, it's written. I'd like to write inside the database and I'd like to make sure that on most of servers is written. And I'd like to write inside database and to be sure that on all replicas of my database, it's replicated. So write concern has uh, flags from one to four. And one is when you don't care about is it written or not. And four, it means that it should replicate on all replicas. Uh, when you do your pipelines, I will show you an example uh, in here. Imagine you do a ps cf command and you have a lot of info. Uh, you would like to select just some of info. Uh, grip mongrel. Yeah, the second is like that. You have just two lines. Uh, so, uh, and after that, you would like to, to sort those operations like uh, this, this sorting operation that was the last one got just two inputs to, to treat. It didn't get uh, all, all inputs that came from the, the first comment. This definitely would take much more time for, for sorting of, of your data. Uh, so aggregation pipeline says the same. If you have a match operation inside your, your application, you should, in, or inside your aggregation pipeline, do it first. It will use index. If you have a limit inside your application, use it just after match. Why? Because you limit the output of results that will go to, to the next stage. And actually this will create a short cursor. And when you're doing sorting, it should be the last operation because actually sorting should be done in the very end when you have uh, not that amount of uh, data, but that amount of data. Just sorting should be done on uh, the least possible amount of data. Uh, the last part that uh, I, I would like to say in uh, MongoDB 4.0, uh, they came with uh, some great performance. First of all, they removed M uh, M -up, uh, v one engine uh, inside. Uh, second of all, they, uh, they added uh, improvements uh, on uh, on database engine in Wire Tiger. They improved it also. This is why compatibility in between version 4.0 and 3.6 uh, of Wire Tiger is not supported. So you cannot migrate directly. You should uh, drop database and re-import. Uh, and uh, the third very, very important uh, point is the edit transactions. This means you may have uh, complete ACID compatibility inside your database. But uh, the, this ACID uh, compatibility of, of your uh, database comes with performance uh, drawbacks. So if you'd like to have transaction, you have to say, okay, performance may be a trade-off for my transactions. If you don't need transactions, uh, transactions are needed in just a few types of applications. You just use uh, your uh, performance and you don't use transactions. So MongoDB came with transactions, but take care of using those as they impact performance. So do you have any questions? I will switch to, to this one and I will 
see the questions you you post either in chat or I will open also the chat. Do you have any questions? You may either put those live or or you may write those and I will answer. Uh, in in QA, uh, I have just this just this question. Okay, yes, I I'm going to to that slide. It's uh, no, it's not here. It's covered queries. Yes, uh, covered queries. Uh, you, you imagine you have uh, you've already created an index that uses just field social security number for, for, for the index. And when you'll be selecting from MongoDB all objects by social security number, you're parsing your documents using that index. And imagine the case that as, as output, you don't need the entire document, the entire tree structure of your document, but you need just that specific field that you're filtering, that social security number. This means that uh, you, you may say that, okay, I need just this field and I don't need something else. And when you do that, MongoDB won't go to, to the disk to read those documents, to read them from disk. They will read all documents directly from the index. So they will provide you as a result, all fields that are already in index. So you have a pre-cached data inside the index. So index will return you the result and no need to read that right. So like that, you can diminute the, the time of, of reading documents. Uh, could, uh, could you please explain what do you mean by relax consistency? As uh, the, the, this concept was, uh, I, I think I met it, but it's uh, I I cannot say now what's what's that. Document. Ah, actually, actually, yes, I, I, I had the, the, that kind of problems. Uh, it happens usually when you have background index built. It's uh, one of uh, uh, one of the most common cases. Uh, when you uh, have a database, you, you, you developed your application, and at some point of time, you should release a new feature. Releasing new features means uh, updating your database structure. And usually you rebuild indexes just to make sure that all new indexes that came inside that, that new release should be also rebuilt. And you launch that uh, index rebuild, and whether there are new indexes and there are continuous writes, those, uh, those fields are not yet indexed and your application goes slow. Uh, my trade-off is uh, always use background indexes, background index build, and even if if it will be slow in a couple of seconds, a couple of seconds or a couple of minutes while index is built, it's better than going in downtime for five, 10 uh, seconds or minutes while foreground index is built. So, so just uh, background, background index build is okay, but uh, the trade-off is here that uh, the searches will be slower.
I will stop share and you'll see my video. So uh, about the business case sort then limit. Uh, yes, that's not that usual business case, but uh, when when it's the case, uh, I, I advise you to use this uh, strategy. When you need to sort then uh, then limit, uh, I'd advise you doing sorting if it's uh, in aggregation pipeline. You use match, you use limit. Next, you use sort. Uh, whether you need to to limit something. But the sorting is done on an indexed column. You may do initially sort it will sort on index column, and uh, next you you can limit. But sorting should be first in this case just when uh, sorting is done on index column. Otherwise, it should be after limit because uh, you fetch all necessary document according to limit, and next you'll go to sorting. Uh, definitely, I will share on a GitHub account uh, the collection. It's it's free of charge. Uh, I've actually the collection with items I found on the free uh, MongoDB collections on on internet. I will share it. I will share the source code with all examples, and I will share the the presentation also. So it, it's it's okay. Uh, group performance is always slow. Uh, it's, it should be avoided. Uh, you, actually, MongoDB was created as a database that shouldn't need group performance. Usually, group performance, when is it needed? Uh, you, you create a, uh, uh, a list of uh, documents or items. And after that, you say, I'd like to count and uh, group by ID. Or I'd like to sum group by ID. So it's an uh, aggregation operation. Uh, this is why uh, you should either pre-cache those values like using ink or sum or add uh, when you're adding or updating a document or uh, what the strategy is using aggregation pipeline uh, from time to time uh, as a background service on your server and update the document. But I uh, never use in production group uh, group pipeline. As it's slow, and if it's a real-time database, it will block the collection because it's doing the aggregation pipeline on it, and it's it's really slow. Uh, what do you mean by separate folders for uh, data and index? While you're answering uh, this. Uh, MongoDB is uh, running, uh, let's say, natively in uh, free environments. It's uh, Azure, AWS, and uh, uh, Google Cloud. Uh, they have Atlas. Uh, I will see if I have an access to, to Atlas. I should have a connection. If I uh, if I can log in, I will show you how, how is it done there. But the, the, there is an Atlas uh, cloud, and you deploy there your MongoDB. You have a great configuration engine there with uh, great capabilities. Uh, so uh, e even you can deploy your servers with lowest latency on uh, on on different. Uh, or in different countries. So you just say there, I'd like to have the least latency from New York. I'd like to have the least latency from London. I'd like to have the least latency from Frankfurt. And uh, your Atlas and uh, the AWS, for example, server, will decide wh where a deployment should be done on which servers and how to replicate the data in, in order to, to assure you with uh, the lowest latency and that will be done automatically without any line of code. So you just continue coding and uh, from DevOps side, they can configure with a couple of clicks how your application will be deployed. Uh, 
А, окей. Uh, about the questions, but, but if you want to calculate some average of your document values or count some unique edges, how can you do it with, uh, with group? Uh, doing that with group, as I said, you can launch background tasks that will uh, do aggregation in your database and it will be a, let's say, a single uh, query and not queries from every user on your website. And uh, you pre-calculate those data and update your documents if you need that to be done regularly with some, uh, some averages. Yes, averages, uh, or you can count the amount of data, you can sum uh, the amount of values and uh, pre-calculate each time when you update a document the the average. So you you keep in all documents both uh, average and you, you can you keep both average uh, amount and the sum of values. Have you ever used my produce and what was the case and performance? Uh, I I rather avoid uh, MapReduce. It was a good engine uh, done for a map v1 uh, engine. Uh, for Wire Tiger, it's a, a bit obsolete uh, and it's slow. I, I actually I did not use it. It's it has its specific cases when you have to 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 treat uh, some data, actually to get some data, aggregate on them, and after that that aggregate to reduce to some value. And in this case, uh, MapReduce my, my, my can be used. For example, you have uh, a lot of users, they have uh, some, uh, they have salaries, they have, uh, I don't know, some invoices, and you need to calculate some complicated formula using uh, aggregation pipeline that uh, wouldn't be that easy. So we can do that with MapReduce. But uh, I'd, I'd rather avoid it because it's a blocking operation on database. Ah, okay, so uh, about the creation of, uh, is it possible uh, to, to create uh, an index cache for se separate for that, uh, fo separate folders for data and index? So uh, as I mentioned in, in my slide, yes, you can create, uh, you can specify that uh, database files should be in a separate folders and index files too. How, how can you use uh, that in terms of performance? Uh, uh, on your machine or on your server, you can mount a disk, a remote disk uh, that is a fast one and you be using that disk with, uh, let's say with 32 giga, uh, 32 giga for index and an average disk performance for your data. Uh, like that, you'll, uh, you'll have uh, your data and uh, uh, data fetched from disk with normal performance and index fetched from disk with uh, great performance. Uh, is it interesting to split a collection when it's too huge? Uh, yes, it's called sharding. Uh, but this uh, split of collection will imply uh, small changes on the code. So you have to indicate the shard key when you're using that uh, sharded, uh, sharded collection. Uh, the use cases of having huge collections that have to be sharded are not that big. There are not that, that many cases. Uh, usually there are people that are putting everything in one collection and they're thinking that it's a good strategy. No, collection should have the data that is uh, always asked or searched for, but if you need some aggregate sums uh, and other data inside your collection, just do your aggregation job in background and present that with eventually consistent way. And uh, about sharding, uh, I, I, I tried that. I de deployed the sharded cluster for, uh, for, for one of the projects and it contained the shard on, uh, on the biggest collection and it was split by uh, countries. So uh, each country had its own shard and uh, like that shards uh, have been located in, uh, in its specific region. Uh, 
uh, how performance should be machine for MongoDB in terms of CPU and RAM. Actually, the uh, amount of CPU and RAM is uh, up to you. Uh, there is no universal formula. For RAM, uh, there is a concept of you should have just enough RAM. It means that you, you may see the uh, inside your database. If you uh, tap uh, db.stats, you'll see how much, uh, how many bytes you need for your index. So RAM should be not less. So it should be, it may be more, but it shouldn't be less because index, at least indexes should fetch in ROM. And next you can see the cached data that has your MongoDB, MongoDB usually after each query, it caches some data. So the, those data should be also inside, inside ROM. So you, you get the first number, the size of index bytes, the size of cached data bytes, and that's the exact formula for your ROM. For CPU, it, it depends as, may, uh, as many CPUs have, it's better. And it's, uh, it's proved empirically how many CPUs you need for a project. Uh, or you can see how, how many concurrent connections you may have, uh, 100, 200 connections, what kind of queries they do on different collection on the, the same collection, is it sequential or not? And then you decide, uh, should it be, uh, sh should you have one CPU or 100 CPUs? Do we have other questions? I'm checking if. Yes, uh, you, you may use Faceit uh, in cases when, when it's uh, really needed, needed on your project, so. The, the, there is no, I, I don't have right now an example of uh, when should it be used uh, on, on, on the project. Uh, by, by the end of uh, these presentations, uh, you'll receive uh, the presentation slides, you'll receive uh, as a grid uh, a link to GitHub repository with all code, with a database dump, and I will see all information that you may need for uh, playing with MongoDB. And uh, if there are no more questions, uh, I advise you to fill in the feedback form. If you if you do that effort next time, the presentation should be should be much better, uh, and I will improve also uh, my presentation skills, and I'll try to avoid th that kind of bugs that they have, and hope you enjoyed it. And please contact me whether you have any question about MongoDB. I'm uh, always open to to discuss interesting topics, and if it's challenging, it's it's even better. Thank you very much for uh, for your feedback in, in the chat. You, thank you. And have a nice weekend. Uh, end of the day, sorry. Ah, okay, I got one more question before going out. Uh, embedded documents offer more performance in favor of uh, linked documents? Uh, yes, uh, as, as I said, you may have a tree structure and that tree structure is the description of a specific object. And MongoDB documents are like ob real, real life objects. And if you would like to present it in one page, you may do either a presentation of the entire object using one query when you have embedded uh, documents, and when you have linked documents, 
you'll have to select or find one the document you have uh, the main one and to take all links and to make a couple of queries to get all links so i i'd uh, i'd advise you using embedded documents but there are uh, there are limits of using that so just just look in in the limits of mongodb one of them is uh, a document shouldn't be greater than 16 megabytes of data so if you have uh, links for uh, more than 16 megabytes of data then yes you should use uh, links but if it's uh, one two mega of data you can use the embedded documents Uh, I am open to any other questions. If uh, if you have other questions, please put them. If not, if during the next two minutes we won't have any other questions, I think uh, we may end. If not, we can continue discussing. 